You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday 14th of July 2014. Farnworth Syria activist arrested in sex assault and a child porn probe. Welby, let's not get hysterical about Islamic radicalisation. Britain to spend an extra £1.6 billion monitoring global terror groups. Germany, Palestine protesters try to storm Berlin's Fan Mile. German police megaphone used in anti-Israel rant. Egyptians hoping Israel will destroy Hamas. There is experience, and then there is experience, as, U- as USA sends draft notices to men born in the 1800s. Thought for the day, evil survives death. And finally, two for one day, Monday. UK News. Farnworth, Syrian activist, arrested in sex assault and child porn probe. An activist who led several aid convoys from Bolton to Syria has been arrested on suspicion of having child porn and sexually assaulting a teenager. Kazim Jamil, aged 33, of Farnworth, was arrested on suspicion of sexually assaulting a 19-year-old woman and possessing an indecent image of a child. He is now being questioned in police custody. World at eight. Oh dear, the kid gloves will be on this one. He's Muslim, a terrorist, and a paedophile and a rapist. Two things he ain't is white and either dead or poor. Welby, let's not get hysterical about Islamic radicalisation. Archbishop of Canterbury plays down threat from Muslim youths travelling to Middle East and returning radicalised, warning against a national culture of fear. People should stop being so hysterical about the threat from Islamic radicalisation in Britain, the Archbishop of Canterbury has insisted. The most reverent Justin Welby said there is a problem with young Muslim youths travelling to Syria and elsewhere to wage jihad, but the numbers were extraordinarily small. He warned against allowing a national culture of fear to spring up because of the actions of a tiny minority of Muslims. World at eight. Oh, lordy, lordy, am I hearing a right here? Has this idiot converted? How can we expect a strong Christian church presence when even the Pope is in denial? Bring back the fighting popes and the crusaders. Give us something to admire, not this modern bunch of sissies. Britain to spend an extra 1.6 billion monitoring global terror groups. Prime Minister David Cameron revealed plans on Monday to supplement British Special Forces with an extra 1.6 billion pounds to expand their surveillance and intelligence capabilities. Cameron has warned of a threat to the UK by militant groups operating in Iraq and Syria. He told Parliament he would disagree with those people who think this is nothing to do with us, adding that an extreme Islamist regime in the middle of Iraq would affect us. Cameron said the people in that regime, as well as trying to take territory, are planning to attack the UK. So the right answer is to be long-term, hard-headed, patient and intelligent. He said this strategy should apply not just in Iraq, but in Syria, Somalia, Nigeria and Mali. Otherwise, these problems will come back and hit us at home. Cameron will emphasise the significance of drones and special forces when he unveils equipment at the Farnborough Air Show this weekend. The Times reported. World at eight. Why should we spend billions on monitoring terrorism abroad when we import the buggers at a rate of knots and pay them and their stinking families to stay? I could think of a myriad of ways to spend that money, couldn't you? European News. Germany. Palestine protesters try to storm Berlin's Fan Mile. Hundreds of Palestinian protesters tried to storm Berlin's Fan Mile on Saturday afternoon, the centre of World Cup celebration in the German capital. Police said that around 800 protesters, largely young Palestinian men, gathered at Potsdamer Platz in central Berlin shortly before 6pm to demonstrate against Israeli military action in the Gaza Strip. They then tried to reach the Fan Mile, the street running west from the Brandenburg Gate, which is sealed off for World Cup games. The protesters broke through the first police cordon, Tagesspiegel newspaper reported, and were stopped by a second police line. Police said the protests turned towards Witzenberger Platz. 
Police reinforcements were rushed in to contain the demonstration and stones were thrown at officers, Tagish Spiegel reports. There was also trouble in Frankfurt and Maine where 2,500 pro-Palestine demonstrators gathered on Saturday. World at eight, same problem as the rest of Europe. What will happen when these warring tribes outnumber us Europeans? Will it be too late for firm action? German police megaphone used in anti-Israel rant. German police allowed an anti-Israel protester to climb inside a police car and shout slogans including child murderer Israel and Aloha Akbar, Arabic for God is great, through a police megaphone, a spokeswoman for Frankfurt's police said on Sunday. Police let the protester use the megaphone during a free Gaza demonstration Saturday because he'd offered to calm down a protest that had turned violent. Spokeswoman Virginie Wegner told the Associated Press. We, as police, had come up spontaneously with this unusual method and he abused it. We didn't expect that, Wegner said, adding that police were investigating the incident. Police are neutral during protests. Instead of calming things down, the protester, whose identity was not revealed, shouted anti-Israel slogans in German and Arabic in downturn Frankfurt. A video that went viral shows a crowd following the police car, cheering and repeating the chants world at eight. Now, if the neo-Nazis had done the same, chanting anti-Muslim rants or even anti-Israeli ones, the media would have blown it out of all proportion. Muslims hate the Jews more than the Christian Germans, and it shows. World News. Egyptians hoping Israel will destroy Hamas. Khalid Abu Toma for the Gatestone Institute writes, over the past week, there are voices coming out of Egypt and some Arab countries, voices that publicly support the Israeli military operation against Hamas in the Gaza Strip. They see the atrocities and massacres committed by Islamists on a daily basis in Iraq and Syria and are beginning to ask themselves if these serve the interests of the Arabs and Muslims. Thank you, Netanyahu. May God give us more people like you and destroy Hamas. Aziz Sami of the Egyptian newspaper al Haram. Isolated and under attack, Hamas now realises it has lost the sympathy of many Egyptians and Arabs. World date. Now Egypt is moderate and sees the problems. Israel has its own country and is entitled to it. No one ever wanted the so-called Palestinians of old, as they consisted of a few offset sheep herders after World War I. Their own religion and the Arab League didn't want them, and that hasn't changed. They've migrated and increased in the last 90-odd years, but are still unwanted. Except, of course, by the media and Hamas. There is experience and then there is experience as USA sends draft notices to men born in the 1800s. The agency that manages the dormant US military draft has apologised after sending conscription registration notices to men born in the late 1800s. The Selective Service System, SSS, said the error occurred after a clerk neglected to select the century in the search for newly eligible young men. It sent 14,250 notices to Pennsylvania men born 1893-97, to in addition to 1993-97, before discovering the error. The men are almost all certainly dead, as the youngest would be 117. Male U.S. citizens must register for drafts shortly after their 18th birthdays, and all male immigrants between the ages of 18 and 25 must register. World at eight. All male migrants, lovely, should have that over here to bolster our armed forces. What a laugh. Have they employed a migrant to commit this faux pas? Thought for the day. Evil survives death? One of the comments I read on my article, it is all in the plan, my friends, was that Kudenhove, Kalergi, was dead, as was Saville, and their legacies should be allowed to die with them. Now, we don't live in a perfect world, or even in a perfect country. Perfection is overrated and eagerly sought after, and yet what is perfect to one person is not perfect to another, and although a sight orientated sense, it is ephemeral in the sighting thereof, not to be held in the hand, but more in the mind. It is with this thought in mind that I did try to see the affiliation between a dead and alleged paedophile or sexual abuser who is no longer able to defend what could be his terrible actions in the past, and a very clever man with an agenda which encompassed the whole of Europe, if not the world. And that is where I ran out of any similarities there might have been. 
Seville hatred spans, spans the class system and unites a certain band of people in doing so. Anyone who is anyone who wants to be anyone jumps on this particular bandwagon, even though their lives or their relatives' lives have not been touched by Saville's grimy paws or worse. It is rather like poor little Madeleine McCann, whose so-called professional parents left her and her twin siblings alone while they whined and dined, and haven't stopped whinging ever since, when the actual crux of the whole matter is that these babies were left unattended in the first place, in a region where several children had gone missing, and the centre or hotel wherever had offered to babysit them. And the Portuguese police did not pay so much attention because if parents can leave babies, so can they. Point is, the entire point of the story of Madeleine has been missed. She was abandoned and taken. Her baby siblings were left as they didn't fit the profile needed by the takers. And the point of a comparing CK to Saville is also at odds with the facts we know. Apart from the glaring point that couldn't hurt Kalergi was, as far as we know, a fairly normal married man and not someone who looked from the outset like a pervert's dream mentor. We also have to operate on the unpleasant truth that most, if not all, the major wars in the last 100 years have been orchestrated for the world stage and money. The First World War was the largest and most ruinous one for Europe and the first to be fought in between the old and new methods of killing men. In the UK you had fierce old warriors who had sat astride horses and directed men into the cannons trying to do the same thing against the Germans and to terrible effect. Massive numbers of young men, in fact the best generation England has ever known, got mowed down in the senseless slaughter that followed. And like the Second World War, it was the aftermath and dividing up of the spoils that gave rise to the Third Reich and the plan. I watched Pearl Harbour the other night, and although I'd seen it before, I noticed that before the strike against Hawaii and the US Pacific Naval Fleet, the US had imposed oil sanctions against Japan, and the Japanese only had 18 months' worth of supplies left. Now, even then, Japan was a highly industrialised society and needed oil. So once again, Pearl Harbour, although terrible, was expected. Just the timing was not. As Hitler had signed an agreement with the Japanese as allies, this brought the US into the European war. And believe me, my friends, without the Yanks, we would all be sitting here speaking German. So whether you thank them or hate them is entirely down to you. Now, Kunho was half Japanese from his mother, who came from a wealthy, oil-rich family in Tokyo, and he believed that the Pacific should be controlled entirely by the Japanese and Chinese, whereas his plans for a pan-Europe were very different. That is, totally replacing white peoples with ethnic diversity. No such plan for his fellow Orientals, though. The idea pan-Europe elicited support from politicians as diverse as their orientation as Carlos Sforza and Jal Marshach. Although couldn't have Kalergi found himself unable to sway Benito Mussolini, his ideas influenced Aristide Briand and his inspired speech in favour of a European Union in the League of Nations on the 8th of September 1929, as well as his famous 1930 memorandum on the organisation of a regime of European Federal Union. Meanwhile, his pan-Europeanism earned vivid loathing from Adolf Hitler, who excoriated its pacifism and mechanical economism and belittled its founder as everybody's bastard. After the annexation of Austria by the Third Reich in 38, couldn't have Kalergi fled to Czechoslovakia and thence to France. As France fell to Germany in 1940, he escaped to the United States by way of Switzerland and Portugal. During the war, he continued his call for the unification of Europe along the Paris-London axis. His wartime politics and peripeties served as the real-life basis for fictional resistance hero Victor Laszlo, the Paul Heinrich character in Casablanca. He published his work, Crusade for Pan-Europe, in 1944. Now, the point being, the plan is alive, well and thriving in this country and throughout Europe, whereas the oddity that was Saville, like other sick characters, has already almost been forgotten, but is often raked up to hit yet another white institution in the guts, and or to supplement the news on Gaza. Yawn. To illustrate, I was sitting down outside our little local co-op on Saturday, taking a bit of a rest, and just turned to a woman sitting next to me. To cut a long story short, she was very nice, white and Romanian, not a Roma. I asked her how long she'd been over here, and yup, five days was the answer. She and her husband, also Romanian, had come over to a cleaning agency in the neighbouring small town and were working in that town and living in Borden. Five days. And that is what our employers are doing, bringing them in with the promise and actuality of doing jobs that white people were forced to do as little as ten years ago. Her husband turned up speaking no English at all and off they went, having contributed to the co-op economy. 
Now, they may be white and nice, but even Eastern Europeans bring their culture with them, and lack of English and worse, childbearing propensities. Then we have all the relatives who can also clean and sweep, and these people might or might not bring their children up in the English method of the past, but I doubt it. Don't be fooled by colour. All immigrants, regardless of colour, bring their own way of life, eating, education and health with them. And all of them, without exception, will take advantage of our National Health Service and our education facilities, to name but a few. This woman had been over here just five days and was working and had a home and a husband also working. Whether or not they had kids, I don't know, but if not, they soon will, as they get money for them. So the plan is not only to bring in foreigners with a completely different religion and culture, but a facimile of our own peoples, again with their own history, and it ain't English history or culture, and never has been. Our schools have been assimilated. Our our NHS is groaning under the strain of being assimilated. Our further education facilities are assimilated. Our towns and cities are being assimilated. Our religion is is already under threat and being assimilated. Our youth have been assimilated and propagandised, as has our media and entertainment, all assimilated within the plan. The plan works because we've allowed it to work. We've voted it in and we continue to vote it in. I watch people's reactions to the latest black Africans who plod around locally and the usual reaction is they ignore them. They don't even look at them. As if once they do look, reality will assume its rightful place and resentment will rear its pretty head. We are frightened of being noticed actually noticing the difference that a month can make on even a small enclave like this, ethnicity-wise. This is a case where ignorance is not bliss. It is just that ignorance. Now, with all ethnic migration, whether from Europe or the rest of the world, these people all come from their own countries, even if they have travelled thousands of miles through the EU or wherever to land here. Even if they produce children here, they are not, in my eyes, British, but may be British-born. They all come from countries with cultures very different to ours, and especially our culture of looking after animals, which has been sadly lacking in the last 40-odd years, due to influxes of different ethnicities, as well as our own white retards. Incidents of animal cruelty are up. Crossbows are de rigueur now, as is eating our wildlife. Joanna Lumley may be interested in the fact that her lovely Nepalese pals have a festival every five years in the Barra district of Nepal, in which several different species of farm animals are slaughtered at Gadahame, including large numbers of buffalo. Tens of thousands corralled into one giant pen. Once the day of slaughter comes, it's reported that over 200 slaughtermen are sent into the pen, wielding swords. The buffalo are then beheaded while fully conscious. This is a totally unacceptable way to slaughter any animal. Beheading is no easy task, and it has been reported it often takes several attempts to behead the buffalo. Some reports state that buffaloes are brought to the ground first by cutting the tendons in their legs. Furthermore, in this festival setting, with thousands of unfamiliar animals penned in together, they will experience huge levels of stress and fear, not least when other buffalo are slaughtered all around them. In fact, the Nepalese government, whilst trying to stop their erstwhile citizens coming over here, have now paid £32,000 to have hundreds of these poor beast slaughters, which is a huge amount of money for a poor pro-communist regime. My point is, when these people come here, all people try to imitate the way of life they had. The religious festivals, the meats, the slaughter methods. We all know this from Halal and the influence it has on our culture and farming in the UK. It is their culture that spreads, not ours. Fact. We already have talk of beheadings in Trafalgar Square for the, in, for the infidels, so why not have a mass butchering at the same time? It is time the English, or part of whatever's, stood up and realised we are an endangered species. Us, white, English, or Anglo-Saxon, or Celt, or Gael, or Germanic, or Norman, I don't care. It is us who should be on petitions for preservation as well as the poor animals. No, the CK plan is working too well, and his evil lives on way past that of so vile and his gropings and worse. It is working because of the English and the Northern European temperament, or rather the mental laziness of us to not fear what we cannot see until it is too late. How much do we have to stand before we stand and be counted? How much propaganda can one country stand? 
How many lies does it take to obviate the obvious? How many strangers does it take to replace a light bulb? About 7.5 million, apparently. And finally, two for one day Monday, especially for homosexuals and the mentally challenged. The gay flight attendant. My flight was being served by an obviously homosexual flight attendant, who seemed to put everyone in a good mood as he served us food and drinks. As the plane prepared to descend, he came swishing down the aisle and told us that Captain Marby has asked me to announce that he'll be landing the big scary plane shortly. So lovely people, if you could just put your trays up, that would be super. On his trip back up the aisle, he noticed this well-dressed and rather Arabic-looking woman hadn't moved a muscle. Perhaps you didn't hear me over those big brute engines, but I asked you to raise your tracy poo so the main man can pity-pat us on the ground. She calmly turned her head and said, In my country, I'm called a princess, and I take orders from no one. To which, I swear, the flight attendant replied, without missing a beat, Well, sweet cheeks, in my country, I'm called a queen, so I outrank you. Tray up, bitch. And especially for Mental Health Day, Ralph and Edna were both patients in a mental hospital. One day, while they were walking past the hospital swimming pool, Ralph suddenly jumped in the deep end. He sank to the bottom of the pool and stayed there. Edna promptly jumped in to save him. She swam to the bottom and pulled him out. When the head nurse director became aware of Edna's heroic act, she immediately ordered her to be discharged from the hospital, as she now considered her to be mentally stable. When she went to tell Edna the news, she said, Edna, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is you're being discharged, since you were able to rationally respond to a crisis by jumping in and saving the life of the person you love. I have concluded that your act displays sound-mindedness. The bad news is, Ralph hung himself in the bathroom with his bathrobe belt right after you saved him. I'm so sorry, but he's dead. Edna replied, he didn't hang himself, I put him there to dry. How soon can I go home? Happy Mental Health Day. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>